You know, rotation is a funny thing. Not haha <laughs> funny, but kind of strange. Not only can't you feel it, everything does it. From galaxies to atoms, the universe is taking us for a spin. Strangely, it was more difficult to prove that the Earth is rotating than it was to prove that the Earth is revolving around the Sun. Way back in 1610, Galileo, the father of experimental science, provided the first proof that Earth and all the other planets revolve around the Sun. Galileo showed in his telescope that Venus was going through phases like the Moon. The only conclusion possible was that Venus was revolving around the Sun. Case closed. Planets revolve. But it wasn't until 241 years later, March 31, 1851 to be exact, that Leon Foucault proved that Earth was rotating. Foucault installed a giant pendulum from the 220-foot-high ceiling of the Pantheon in Paris. That's a lot of peace. An assembly of scientists and journalists watched as the floor turned beneath the giant pendulum. The Earth turns, they shouted, eh, mostly in French. Another strange thing about rotation is that although the Earth is rotating at a constant speed, the surface of the Earth is moving at all different speeds at all different latitudes. The same is true for every planet and star. At the equator, the surface of the Earth is moving the fastest, at 1,037 miles per hour. That's much faster than the speed of sound, which is a mere 761 miles per hour. Halfway from the equator to the North or South Pole, at 45 degrees latitude, the Earth is rotating at 733 miles per hour. Standing at the North or South Pole, it would take you 24 hours just to turn around one time. And that's both boring and cold. One result of these differential rotational speeds of Earth is that it creates belts and bands not only in the atmosphere, but also on the surface of the Earth. Jupiter, of course, is famous for the belts and bands in its clouds caused by the giant planet's rapid rotation of about 28,000 miles per hour. The belts and bands on Earth's surface are somewhat overlooked, but we've got them too. We have white ice at the North and South Poles, and between the two poles, there are alternating belts and bands of dry sandy desert and moist green vegetation. This essential geography can be seen most clearly when we view the Earth rotating in space. Space agencies use the differential rotation of the Earth to their advantage. They launch their rockets as close to the equator as possible. NASA uses Cape Canaveral near the southern tip of Florida. And the ESA, the European Space Agency, uses the Guiana Space Center in French Guiana, South America, almost exactly at the equator. Because the land under a rocket near the equator is rotating at a greater speed, it gives the rocket a boost into space that launch sites near the poles cannot provide. You always want to save fuel, you know? Speaking of Jupiter, as I did about three paragraphs ago, the axis of rotation of the big planet is even less inclined than that of the Sun. The Sun is tilted at an angle of around 6 degrees, while Jupiter is only tilted 3 degrees. Jupiter stands almost perfectly upright, which combined with the great speed at which Jupiter is rotating – its entire day is less than 10 hours – it turns Jupiter into a giant gyroscope. Jupiter's gyroscopic stability, combined with its massive gravity, gives stability to the whole solar system. Jupiter prevents chaos factors from disrupting the orbits of the other planets. In other words, without Jupiter rotating like a stable gyroscope, the solar system could never have stayed intact for the billions of years that it has. Exoplanet solar systems are showing signs of chaos in their orbits. They could use a gyroscope like Jupiter to hold them together. Rotation is the real hero here. As for the Sun, its differential rotation has a big effect on its sunspot activity. Sunspots are spots or patches that sometimes appear on the Sun's surface, usually at mid-latitudes in both the northern and southern hemispheres of the Sun. As sunspot activity increases on the Sun, sunspots begin to move closer to the equator. Few sunspots are ever seen near the poles. With differential rotation, the gases at the equator of the Sun are moving faster than the gases at the Sun's poles. This differential motion of the gases twists the magnetic field lines in the Sun, causing them to snap. Sunspots are magnetic eruptions rising through the surface of the Sun, hurling electrified gases far into space and emitting intense ultraviolet radiation, often in the direction of the Earth. Uh-oh. Well, have no fear, Earth's differential rotation protects us. Not only does our Earth rotate differentially on its surface, but also down into its center. Studies of seismic readings of shock waves from earthquakes indicate the metallic core of the Earth is rotating slightly faster than the surface of our planet. 
Scientists think that the differential rotation of Earth's magnetic core within the slower rotating metallic liquid creates the magnetosphere arising from Earth's poles and extending far out into space. This magnetosphere keeps Earth safe from electrified gases from the sun. Hurrah for rotation! Far out! Now, the 9.0 megaquake in 2011 off the coast of Japan rearranged the mass of Earth's crust and caused the rotation of Earth to speed up. The day got shorter. Eh, not much shorter. 1.6 millionths of a second. But we are accustomed to seeing the Earth's rotation slowing down. The Earth rotating through the tidal action of the Moon's gravitational effect on the oceans drains kinetic energy from the Earth's rotation, causing the planet to slow down. Each day is becoming longer, about two thousandths of a second longer. Well, I need to adjust my watch. Leap years, we all know, are when we add a day to the calendar every four years, on February 29th, to straighten up Earth's yearly rotation around the Sun, taking 365 and one quarter days. But leap seconds are added to the clocks every so often to synchronize our clocks with the slowing rotation of the Earth and allow the Earth to catch up with our clocks, as if the Earth is concerned about our timepieces. 27 leap seconds have been added since 1972. The last leap second was added on December 31, 2016, and made the clocks read 6.59.60 p.m. Yeah, I didn't notice either. But the Sun's rotation has unexpectedly been speeding up recently. Usually, it takes 86,400 seconds for the Earth to rotate, as measured by an array of atomic clocks in different locations on Earth and coordinated by a special service in Paris. Yes, they pay people for that. July 19, 2020 was the shortest day ever recorded, a whopping 1.46 milliseconds less than the usual 86,400. Gadzooks! If this keeps up for another five years, they may have to add a negative leap second to synchronize our clocks to Earth's increasing rotation. Computers and satellites won't like to see their clocks read January 1st at 0 o'clock, and they say time can't go backward. At least the Earth hasn't started rotating backward or stopped rotating altogether. That would be catastrophic. Everything would crash forward at whatever differential speed it was rotating on Earth. Yet that appears to be what happened to the planet closest to Earth, Venus. Venus rotates very slowly backward, in retrograde, and that is very unusual. How so, you ask? Well, there are several theories to why Venus rotates in retrograde motion while all the other planets rotate in prograde or forward motion. Liquids inside a rotating sphere, like a planet, have a lot of inertia. That's why when you take an egg from the fridge, for example, and try to spin it, it won't spin. The liquid inside is just sitting there. Its inertia is resisting your attempt to spin it. However, if finally, after many turns, you manage to get the raw egg to rotate, it's hard to get it to stop spinning. If you do pick it up and put it back down, the egg will start rotating again, because the inertia of the liquid inside it is still going forward. You only stop the shell from spinning. Something like this may have happened to Venus. Wait a minute. Venus? Backspin? Tennis? Hmm, I think there's a connection here, somewhere. We know that on Venus, <clears throat> the planet, one day is longer than one year. It takes longer for Venus to slowly rotate around backward one time than it takes Venus to orbit the Sun once. But Venus is slowing down dramatically, and by 6.5 minutes in the last 25 years. If there still is liquid inside Venus and the movement continues, we might see Venus completely stop spinning backward and start rotating forward again. Ah, come on Venus, let's get with the crowd! This business of retrograde and prograde rotation has got quite a bit of mystery to it. It seems that everything tends to rotate in prograde motion. If you shape your right hand like a ball and stick your thumb up to indicate north, then curl your wrist towards you, that's prograde motion. Your fingers on the left side of your hand are moving towards you. Black holes, solar systems, galaxies, atoms, stars, etc. all seem to rotate prograde, depending on which angle you view them from. Experiments at the Large Hadron Collider indicate that subatomic particles spin toward the left, prograde. It's starting to look as if we may be in a left-handed universe. Then why is it so hard to find a left-handed manual can opener or measuring tape? I don't know. It's a mystery.